anything like that. And um, I have heard rumors about your own team, NVIDIA, uh, about their plans for the future in regards to international competitions. So what can we see in regards to Australians uh, potentially uh, being involved in these international comps? Well, in the past, we've seen players like Moonglade uh, participate in a lot of international events. He's been over to Korea uh, to compete in the GSL. He's been to Germany at least once uh, to compete in the IEM, where he actually did quite well in one of them. The uh, Intel Extreme Masters Season 5 World Championships, I believe it was, he took fourth place, oh, being wow. the, uh, the only player in the top four who wasn't Korean. And it came very, very close to making it into the podium as well. So that was really impressive. Yeah. Um, we've seen Tigun in the GSL Team League representing FXO back when he was on their roster. Unfortunately, he didn't do too well. But I mean, it's always great for us, even if we don't succeed, to have that exposure, just to get our names out there and make sure that people recognize that, hey, we do have talent in our region. Yeah, of course. Um, we've also seen players like Iegus and Pig, who also went to IAM in China about, I think it was about six or eight months ago. Um, and again, they didn't make it out of their groups, but they really uh, showcased some stellar games. And it really, really brought a lot of great recognition towards them as, uh, as talented players. And uh, we saw Rossi go over to the Philippines for the PPSL, which is also branded as the IGN Pro League Pacific Qualifiers a few months ago. So he did quite well over there. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to really get our players off this little rock of ours because... It's, it's very expensive. It's an expensive venture to send our players anywhere. Uh, yeah. Korea is one of the cheapest choices, being uh, reasonably close to us. But if you want to go as far as like America or Europe, it starts getting a lot more pricey, obviously. Yeah, understandable. Um, and yeah, with regards to the, the rumor about uh, NVIDIA going to MLG later this year, that's, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we're going to be sending the entire team over, plus myself, uh, later this year, probably after the Australian winter. So it won't be for quite a while yet. Wow, well, that's really, really exciting stuff. So that would probably be the, the most Australian gamers going to one event that we've ever seen, really, into an international event. Would that be correct? Um, almost. I guess you could say, like, you know, in terms of um, Counter-Strike, like we would have sent a few Counter-Strike teams internationally in the past, but as far as RTS goes, yeah, absolutely. Wow, definitely exciting stuff. Well, we wish you and your team the best luck when you do go over there. Um, moving forward, look, Starcraft, like, where do you see Starcraft? Like, what's Starcraft's place in ACL, and where do you see it going from here? Is it going to expand to become this? Is it going to be viral and just take over the Australian esports scene, and things are going to explode? And or is it just going to be kind of mellow as the rest of the Australian esports scene seems to be? I mean, it's picking up as a whole, but obviously it's not steamrolling like the rest of the globe. So, where do you see Starcraft going in Australia and in ACL? Well. To be honest, I think ACL is actually the, the exact vehicle that we needed uh, to promote esports in our region because if we look back to uh, 2010 slash 2011, when MLG first introduced StarCraft 2 to their circuit in America, that was their biggest growth spur imaginable. I mean, it just it took them by surprise. They had StarCraft off to the side, not on like the main stage, and I don't even think they were really streaming much of it to begin with. And then all of a sudden, there was just this tremendous demand. They had a fan base they couldn't even accommodate. And now it's obviously their premier title. So I expect to see the exact same thing happening with ACL. I think StarCraft is really going to take over soon. And it's really going to help to deliver that, uh, I guess you could say, the brand of professional gaming to Australia to really show the rest of the nation that this is a legitimate opportunity for people. And it's not just, you know, it, it is actually evolved from, you know, kids sitting in, in their bedrooms playing computer games with their friends. It's actually a legitimate profession in other parts of the world, and it will become that way in Australia. I'd say probably, unfortunately, within the next two years, because we still do have a lot of catching up to do. And that has a lot to do with population density mm -hmm. and bandwidth limitations. But we will get there. Right. We can't wait for that. So are we going to get to the level where... The, the biggest names in the sports, you know, the as we've mentioned, you know, the, the MVPs or Linux or the boxers or whatever, are we going to get to the level where we'll see them coming over to Australia to compete for any reason? Or do you think it'll still be a long while before we see the likes of those competitions hitting Australian shores? Well, we've had a few of them uh, visit. We had StarTales Ace, who was actually the winner of that uh, IEM World Championship that Moonglade came forth in. He came over to Australia last year to participate in a $25,000 tournament in Sydney. And incidentally, he won it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Not a huge shock there, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But it was actually cool to see how guys took a few games off him. So it wasn't uh, wasn't a clean sweep all the way. 
But um, yeah, I think honestly, with the way that ACL is headed, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in the 2012 circuit or maybe towards the end of 2012 that we actually start exchanging players between MLG and start seeing some of the international talent coming to Australia. And I think that, that's ultimately uh, one of my biggest goals with StarCraft and ACL. Nice. Well, okay, so are we going to get to the level? We're all excited about the future in esports, and it's obviously we're all hoping that it's going to boom. Is it going to get to a point where we can we can start properly financing these these pro gamers? Are we going to get to a point where gamers will be able to just live off their gaming like we're seeing in countries like Korea? Are gamers going to have salaries here in Australia, or is that not possible in, in, in the Australian gaming scene? It's actually really hard to say. Uh, simply, again, because it comes down to that population density. I mean, with less people, it means less money and less opportunities, so everything scales down uh, when you compare to the rest of the world. But optimistically, I'd like to say yes. Maybe not to the same extent that we're seeing uh, with teams like Evil Geniuses paying allegedly like six-figure salaries to purchase players from other teams and things like that. Um, but I honestly, I think it would be a wonderful thing if... Uh, national sponsors or even international sponsors and organizations would see the appeal and see the the marketing opportunities that lie within esports and start uh, providing these players with the opportunities they need to make a, uh, a full-time thing of this. So I guess long long story short, I'd say it's something that we can look forward to beyond two years. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. I mean, right now, we only legitimately have one player in Australia who is, who is uh, Jared Krenzel, otherwise known as TT Pig. Right. Uh, who is receiving a consistent salary from a sponsor, and that's from Thermal Tech Esports. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you've got the NVIDIA guys who are receiving money from me, but that's that's coming from an individual rather than an organization, so I don't really see it in the same light. Right, I understand. Okay, so getting towards the point here now, we'll start wrapping things up. I do have uh, another question for you, though, Docs, and that is, what would you say to a gamer who's on the fence, borderline about playing StarCraft 2 and just doesn't know if they want to dive into the scene, what would you say to a player thinking about that? I would say it's a friendly and welcoming scene. Um, it's it's full of really good, strong, and I guess you could say uh, tightly knit communities. Um, it's a game that rewards you no matter what your skill level is. So if you are just a new up-and-coming learning player, uh, there are leagues and, and uh, game... I guess you could say game scales to support you. It's not like you're just going to be thrown in the deep end trying to figure out what to do against all these other experienced players. Mm -hmm. Um, So the design of the StarCraft 2 ladder allows you to always be matched against people of your skill level, no matter how skilled you are, which is fantastic. And I think that's a very appealing way to draw in new players. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say if it's something that you really want to look at in terms of a professional approach, all you need is time, commitment, and passion. I think passion is a very, very strong part of it. Some people, I mean, I'm one of them. Uh, some people aren't cut out to be professional gamers. Even though I have an absolute fanatic uh, adoration for the scene, It's I could never actually be committed and dedicated enough to sit there and become a pro gamer. So, wow. It's something that some people are cut out for and some people aren't. Some people are more, uh, I guess, more suited to a 9-to-5 and just playing on the side for some fun, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. And others are uh, others are just gifted and have the ability to sit there and practice for eight to 12 hours a day and become world-class players. Right. I understand. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Docs. Uh, look, that's about uh, going to wrap things up for us. So just before we finish, have you got any shout-outs at all, mate? Um, I guess I'll throw a shout-out to, obviously, the ACL guys for bringing me on board in the first place. It's been a wonderful opportunity, and I'm glad that we can bring StarCraft to the circuit successfully. Um, shout-out to the rest of the team, uh, the NVIDIA guys. And of course, the uh, SC2 SCA community, they've uh, actually been instrumental in helping guide uh, the success of StarCraft 2 in Australia and Southeast Asia over the last year and a half. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to check out more of my stuff, you can catch me on Twitter via ACL Docs. Awesome. Well, that's it. Basically, uh, so you've got the rundown now, folks, of the StarCraft 2 scene here in Australia, and hopefully you have a better understanding. After this chat, I'd like to say thank you very much, Docs, for coming and having a chat with us. We appreciate the time. And for anyone listening to this, if you'd like to catch all the details of ACL's upcoming events, uh, you can check out our website, aclpro.com.au. Follow us at Twitter, which is at ACLPro, and we'll catch you next time.